Hello and welcome back to Mikey's Flight Deck and to the configuration video of the MIP center panel. One thing I want to make clear, you have seen this in the build video, I have switched from an optical sensor as a zero switch for the stepper motor to a micro switch. The optical sensors aren't supported out of the box by MobiFlight. It is like this switch is always on or pressed and only in the moment when the barrier of the uh, stepper motor comes in between the light beam then this switch goes off. But MobiFlight is awaiting a switch that goes on in the moment when the stepper reaches the zero uh, position. You can reach this state too with optical sensors when you are building some kind of hardware inverter which turns the signal around but this means a lot of uh, cabling or maybe components extra and so using the micro switches is way more easier. Let's have a quick look at my connection sheet. You can download this for free from my website so that you can use it as a reference for your configuration or build it directly like I did. For this panel I have made these marked configurations here. So I've done configuration M56 up to M106. When we are looking up here you can see I'm now using input multiplexers and these are small ready-made uh, components and these work a little bit like my output shift registers with which I'm controlling many LEDs with only some pins of the Arduino Mega. These input multiplexers need four pins on your Arduino and can control up to 16 inputs with only one chip. And because you can uh, use up to four input multiplexers on your Arduino, you can increase the number of inputs to 64 that you control with only four pins. We will have a look at this in MobiFlight in a moment. The rest of the components aren't really new for you. LEDs, buttons, encoders and do we need and the uh, stepper motors. In MobiFlight uh, you can see the new devices I've made here in the MobiFlight modules tab. I'm using still my Arduino M for this panel. The Arduino is really full now. But as I've said, I have made configurations 56 to 106, so 50 different configurations, but you see only a very small amount of devices here. And here comes the advantage that I'm using the output shift registers and these multiplexers. So all the LEDs are controlled by the output shift registers and all those buttons are controlled by these two multiplexers. So the only devices um, that are left over here are um, two encoders, the stepper motors, here we have the multiplexers and some last buttons that I have connected directly to the Arduino because I didn't want to start a new multiplexer here. Let's have a look to the configuration of such a multiplexer. These chips need four pins on your Arduino that they share. So you can see pin 7, 8, 9 and 48 I'm using here and the same pins, I can't edit these, I used in the second multiplexer. So they share these lines. Every multiplexer needs an additional data connection here, 51, and the first one, 50. You have to keep in mind that when you want to change something uh, inside this configuration, you can do this only in the first multiplexer, in all other following multiplexers that share these lines, these fields are deactivated and you can change them here. You can click this button, go to pin settings and you see MobiFlight will lead you to the correct multiplexer. The configuration of the step motor is already known 
from my last video so uh, everything else i think you have seen before when you have watched some of my last videos to enter all the offsets in prosim you will find all the needed uh, entries under config and configuration in the combine config tab i think you know this already if you have watched some of my videos before most of the entries can be found here in the MIP section, for example, for all the switches, you will find most of them uh, down here. For example, the fuel flow button, the push buttons of the MFD, and here the N1 and speed reference settings, as well as some of the indicators. But everything concerning the auto brake by using the search function, you can see those entries are here in the landing gear section. Here you find the auto brake switch and also the auto brake disarm LED. To configure the needles of the flaps, you have different options. You can use the ProSim variant here, like we have done with uh, servo motors before, for example, here in the MIP section under gauge. There you can find the flap and flap right options. So if you want to build a single or dual needle gauge here. I have demonstrated this before you enter the used offset here and then with these sliders you can define the positions of the needles so that Prosim knows where to position the needle for a special setting of the flaps. But if you would do this, you would have to invest offsets to transfer the data. Always when I'm using offset, I'm thinking twice. If I have to use one of the free usable offsets of FS UIPC, or if there is already an offset that is used for the uh, purpose that I need. And so I have looked again into the FSUIPC documentation and searched for flaps. And here you can find two offsets of four bytes that give you the information of the positions of the left and right flap. I can't use these offsets in the ProSim settings because ProSim can't write into these offsets. They are reserved and I think read out only. And so I will show you a method how to get the informations out of these offsets in MobiFlight and um, create a position of the flaps out of these informations. Just that you have seen this, the LEDs in MobiFlight I'm controlling with a shift register, the output shift registers. And just as an example, you can see here configuration 59. On the sim variable tab, everything is like you already know it. We uh, give it the offsets and look out in which bit we will search for the information. And then in the display tab, I will choose which shift register I'm using and the output where the LED is connected to. And nearly the same is it for the input um, multiplexers. Let's have a look to the input configuration tab. And for example, the button M66, one of the MFD buttons. You can already see here, all these buttons are connected to my input multiplexer one and here on the different ports of this. And when we look in here, again, it is looking uh, like all the other buttons here. We have an on press and on release state. And up here you can see the device where it is connected to my input multiplexer one and their pin or port number zero. You can even scan for the inputs if you aren't sure anymore to which output you have connected to which button, then you press the scan for input button, press your button 
and it will automatically select the output where this button is recognized. So this can be very cool when you only come out with a big strung of cables and you don't know anywhere which cable belongs to which input. I hope you won't come into those troubles. Another thing I could mention is that I'm using encoders for the N1 and speed reference settings. Here you will find one of the encoder configurations. I have showed general uh, encoder configurations to you already. This is all handled on this one side here, uh, the device, uh, the offset. I'm using two bytes uh, for each encoder and we have a turning on left where I reduce the value by one on left fast there everything but uh, 10 times faster and on right and on right fast using encoders isn't like it is done in the real boeing there it is some uh, spring loaded um, knob that can be turned left and right i think like the uh, rudder trim knob in the pedestal panel but I didn't want to design such a knob here on this small space that is available. I have watched up the function of these knobs in the PMDG Boeing and if even they do it as an encoder, I think I can do it in my home cockpit too. Let's have a look now to one of the configurations for the flaps needle. Here I have entered the FSU IPC offset down here and define a size of four bytes. This is everything you have to do here on the sim variable uh, side. And when we have a look at the display tab, then there is one thing that is really important when you are configuring stepper motors. And this is the maximum speed and acceleration. I had some problems when I started doing this configuration. I always wasn't able to uh, hit the um, positions where the needle should end correctly and uh, when I turned it back to the up position then I wasn't able to hit this position again. It was uh, becoming um, even more worse uh, the more I tested it. And finally uh, Sebastian from Moby Flight gave me the tip that I should reduce speed and acceleration. So especially here on the flaps gauge, maybe you have seen this in the FSU IPC offset documentation, there are coming values up to 16,000 and these are spread into very small angles and uh, spaces between the different flaps positions. And it seems like when the stepper motor has to drive so many different uh, values with such high speeds, how can I call this? It gets lost in all these numbers and angles. But after I reduced these acceleration and speeds dramatically, it worked perfectly. And so I can recommend this to all you while building such a flap gauge. I have defined the uh, maximum display scale uh, to 3600, so something no, like uh, 360 degrees for one turning around. And then I had uh, to define the different positions of the needle. And this I'm doing in the modified tab. Here I have defined an interpolation. And the correct values for the interpolation I found out by testing it. So for example, the value of zero comes from the simulator when the flap needle is in its up position. So I entered down here different values to find out which value I have to enter to reach the up position. When I deactivate this modifier here, you can see when I enter, for example, 200, it drives up there. And later I found out that 340 is exactly the position that I need. And so we entered that the sim value zero should be matched 
to the value 340 that controls my stepper motor. And so I went my way through all the different values that come for all the different flap positions and mapped different values to them. And so I come out when I use this modifier again, for example, um, the zero position. This is here, you can see for the left flaps needle, it goes to the up position. The next one is 410 for flaps one. There, it is moving to the position. Next one, 819. It goes to the flaps two position and so on. And what should I say? All positions are working and are synchronized to the needle positions in the simulator. So now it is time for a test if the configuration is working. I have running prepared in the background a ProSim system and display to control the flaps here is running. I click run here in MobiFlight and then especially the flaps needles should synchronize with a simulator. There we have it. Both needles are going to the up position. Let's test on the flaps needles here. So now the flaps are coming down in a simulator. Yeah, both are going to one, two, five, and now 10. Here you can see there are more steps between um, these numbers. So that was the thing that made uh, the problem before. But now everything is working. Yeah, you can see no? it takes way more time now. 25, 30 and 40. And both needles are in the same position. And finally, let's bring them back now to the up position. And here are the flaps back in the up position, synchronized with the simulator and ProSim. One thing I have to mention here about this fuel flow switch, I have installed uh, the wrong switch, not like in the original. I have installed a momentary of momentary switch but this should be an on off momentary switch. This is the same kind of switch that uh, you use uh, for the APU. So I have found um, the right switch on eBay finally and I will uh, change this and then this will work like the original one. But for now let's test this switch here and have a look here in the MIP category of ProSim, we find the fuel flow switch. This is in the rate position, which is the middle position. Now let's go to the used position down. And there you can see it is changing to used and up to reset like ProSim is telling us. So this is already working. Now to the MFD buttons. Down here we have MFD engine and system. Let's begin with the engine button. There you can see it changes to pushed and the system button changes to pushed as well. The auto brake switch. Now we can see if this is working. We have seen before this is in the landing gear category. Up here you can see the auto brake switch is on off. Let's turn it down to RTO. There it is, RTO. And off again. The one position, two, three, and now I have to pull it. And the max position and everything is synchronized in ProSim.
and back again. So this switch is working too. Back to the MIP category and here the speed reference knob, there it is. It is set to auto and V1, VR, there it is. WT and VREF, there it is. The bug and set back to auto. All positions are working here. And we have the N1 button missing. There it is, set to auto. Left to one. And both. What do we have? Two. Yeah, and back to auto. So this is working too. The encoders here are harder to test. I haven't found an option in a ProSim where I can see if this encoder is rotating and I only can test this uh, when I have the, um, this is called the PFD of the uh, captain um, on, but I can't bring my PFD in ProSim to this state when I haven't connected my overhead panel because all the switches are already um, yeah, defined to a button or a switch and so I can turn the power on. So just believe me, I have tested this off camera. These rotary encoders are working. And during the testing of these switches, I realized that the LEDs didn't work. And this is one thing I should tell you when you are using uh, output shift registers. Let's have a look here at these last four configurations here. When I test one of the LEDs in ProSim, you can see it is finally working, but have a look down here to the MobiFlight value and especially the first column here, the flight sim value. I fire up the LED and you see the flight sim value is 64 and another LED 32. And this comes uh, from the output shift register. But um, the signal for LED should only be uh, 1 for on and 0 for off. And so we have to transform these numbers to only 1s or zeros. So, and how have I done this here with a comparison? And I say, if the current value is bigger than zero, one or anything else, then set it to one. Otherwise, set it to zero. So the LED should be off. And this can the control of the LED understand and light up the LED. So, flaps extend, there it is flaps in transit, here we are. And on the landing gear page, we have the anti-skid in, op, there it is, and the auto brake disarm, there we have it. And so I have this panel finally configured and running. If there is something that hasn't come out clear, or should I go deeper into some topics here in the panel configuration, then write this down in the comments. Let me know it so that I can maybe handle this topic in one of the upcoming videos. As I have said at the beginning, you can find the whole configuration sheet on my website in the download section. And if you want to build your own panel at home, then you can find a full set of files for a cutout, engraved, 3D print, all the needed components in the member section of my website. So I will have to move on to the configuration of the next panel and I hope we'll see us soon back on the flight deck.